everyone, it's Stephanie from Scrap and Create, and we're working on page four and five of Orchids and Cats, and um, everything you see here is from the 12 by 12 collection pack. And I just have this roughly laid out so you get a sense of where we're headed. And um, this is actually from one 12 by 12 uh, sheet that I split in half, so the cat is actually looking at the orchids in this uh, uncut page and then this is the flip side of it so i used two 12 by 12s to cover the a side um, one is split in half for these two large pieces and then i used uh, some of the leftover pieces and part of uh, another 12 by 12 of the same uh, pattern to cover the pockets so I did, if I haven't mentioned it already, I did use two 12 by 12s for this collection and that's why I was able to uh, incorporate them in this large scale. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna lay these designer sheets up here and I wanna try to lay them back down in the order that I move them because it is a continuous pattern. Okay, let's start by uh, going over the pocket size. There's gonna be two of these per page, so a total of four between the two pages. They're five and one eighth by four and a quarter. So it's five and one eighth inch across by four and a quarter high. And I decided not to put a gusset on the bottom. I'm gonna put a, a bead of glue down here. And then I'm sta um, stacking these pockets so there's going to be two. One's going to be here and one's going to be here. And I don't want that pocket to be a passer. I want it to stop because I'm going to use these regular size tags. So I don't want it to pass all the way through because it'll be too low. And so the next thing you need to know is that we're going to install these pockets. The first one, we're going to install this one first and then we're going to stack this one. We're going to come down two inches from the top and you're going to apply it directly to the outside edge and I'm going to put one side down, I'm going to run a bead of glue and then we're going to pull the tape on the other side. So come one or two inches down from the top of the pocket page. <clears throat> this is page four, you're installing the pockets on the left hand side. So there's, I put a little tick mark here at two inches, there's my two inch mark. And I'm going to lay this in. I only removed the tape from one side, as you noticed. Okay, so that's in. So the next thing I'm gonna do is remove this tape and then I'm gonna run a, a, a bead of glue and then we're gonna fold it over and close it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, I'm stalling because I don't see my pick tool. <laughs> anywhere. I just, I just had it. Well, I use, oh, here it is. Sorry about that. I got distracted. Nala walked in and I got a little bit distracted. Okay, so there we go. Now we're going to run a bead of glue here. <laughs> go as light as possible. You just want to keep the um, tag from passing through. <clears throat> Now we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to stack this right on top and then we're going to run a bead of glue. So we're going to remove the tape from one side, lay it down. And once again, these are five and one eighth, five and one eighth inch across. You're going to score a half inch on either side. And then we're going to run a bead of glue across the bottom. Now this is going to go flush to the corner. To the edge. There we go. Okay, now we're just going to do the same thing. Remove the tape, add a bead of glue. <clears throat> That's actually more glue than I wanted, so I'm going to lift some of that up. Okay, there we go. So that is that, and then we're going to use uh, Graphic 45 tags in both pockets. That's one. And two. 
So that's the pocket and the tag, tags. And then the next thing we're going to do is install the six by eight, six inches across, eight inches tall, score half inch. And it's gonna get installed just like this. I'm gonna verify that, yeah, that's correct. And we're gonna install this flush with the right hand side of the page. <clears throat> There we go. And then we have one more flap, and this is five by eight. You're gonna score a half inch on the five inch side, five by eight. And I want this to be tucked slightly behind here, so I'm just gonna put a mark here and here. And that's basically where I want that. Actually, I may wait, <coughs> excuse me, Coca-Cola. <laughs> Gosh, if I didn't know better, I'd think it was spring. I've got so many allergies. We're going to have a slight gap between the pocket and, um, and this flap. <clears throat> I am so sorry. And I think I'm going to install it like this, yeah. So there'll be a, a slight gap here and then a gap here and it makes it very obvious that this opens. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, so long as you have this installed straight, all you have to do is open it up, rest your flap, remove your tape, close the flap and press it into place. Now I'm not gonna do that right now because I just noticed that mine's not straight. So I'm gonna straighten it out first before I do that. But hopefully that all makes sense. So yeah, so open it up, rest your hinge on the flap, close it, press it into place. But I can see, it's a little difficult to see, but you might see it, it's drifting up a little bit. And that doesn't bother me so much, but it's drifting up on this side too. So I need to straighten that out and I'm gonna do that before I place it. I'll be right back. Okay, I fixed it, and I did it offline, but I just wanna share with you. I just used the spatula that I have from painting. Um, so any very thin spatula, if you haven't burnished your tape into place, sometimes you can get under it and just lift it, and that's what I did. Uh, worst case, you can use your undo to straighten it, and I didn't have to do that, which I'm thankful for, because then I'd have to wait for it to dry. Okay, so that's in place. So now, like I said, we're gonna rest this here. And then we're gonna close it and find its location. So let's go ahead and get our tape off. <clears throat> and then we are going to repeat the whole process on uh, page five. So I'm resting it uh, on, the, on the flap and I'm just making sure left and right or top to bottom that it is even. And then I'm gonna close it gently holding the edges to keep it from shifting, and press it into place. And that looks good. Okay, so that is page four. I had to think about that for a second. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing for page five. <clears throat> Only we're gonna mirror it. So we'll start with the pockets. And remember, you're gonna do the top pocket first. So here's my little dot at two inches. <clears throat> Again, these are five eighths, five and one eighth by four and a quarter. And it's just going flush. Okay. Here's the tape, bead of glue. And I'm gonna be careful not to overdo it. Okay. There we go, now we're gonna repeat that. Make sure there's no glue sticking out because you don't wanna accidentally glue this pocket closed.
And then we're going to use two more tags. These are Graphic 45 regular tags. <clears throat> that one didn't have a grommet in it. <clears throat> I don't always use a whole pack, so sometimes I have. Hello? Did you come to say hello? <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Nala came in to say hello to me. She said, any food? Is there any food in here? <laughs> okay. All right, so let's go ahead and get our other flaps in, and then I might take a break and go play with my dog for a few minutes. Okay, so this flap is six by eight. You're gonna score a half inch on the six inch side. It's gonna get uh, installed uh, flush to the edge to the left side. <coughs> there we go. Try to do a better job so I don't have to redo it like I did last time. I like to put one corner down and use it as a pivot point so that I can look at both sides to make sure they go on straight and that, look, that worked well. That's kind of just my technique. Everybody's got their own little uh, method. Okay, now if you recall from just a moment ago, we're gonna rest this on the hinge, make sure top to bottom that it's even, and then we're just gonna gently let it close and press it into place. Okay, here we go. So, page four, page five. I'm gonna set page five aside for a moment. We're gonna start decorating page four. Okay, page four is this beautiful piece. And again, I mentioned it was from the 12 by 12 collection pack. And actually it's gonna go this way. Actually, I thought I was gonna put five on top, but the six is gonna go on top. Five is underneath. <clears throat> People ask me all the time what my process is, and it's really difficult to explain because it changes per album. In this case, for orchids and cats, and oftentimes for anything that has really bold images, uh, which Stamperia does have, like this is a very bold image, I wouldn't want to cut through it. So this flap, actually the six inch flap, was designed around this image. So I decided that I measured the image and then I just, cut the flap to match the image. Sometimes I design the flaps and then pick patterns, but for this particular album, I'm not doing that. Okay, so again, this is from the 12 by 12 collection. This is basically cut in half. There were some strips left over, but if you find the 12 by 12 sheet, you'll see that the orchids are on one side, the cat's on the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull in page five and let's go ahead and put down the cat. And I decided um, to put the cat this way because I kind of wanted them looking at the orchids. Oops, looks like I forgot to put some ink on one side. So you can see how this edge, these two edges show up pretty good and this edge doesn't and that's because I didn't put ink on it. Now you can see it a little bit, it makes it pop a little bit more. And that's why I use ink because uh, most pattern papers, in fact, all the pattern papers I've ever worked with have a white core. So just getting that little bit of ink on the edge makes it stand up a little bit. <clears throat> kind of gives the illusion of a mat without having to add another layer of paper. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we're making some progress. Set that aside again. And then here are the papers that I have for the pocket. And I'm going to lay them out to make sure I get them in the right sequence. Okay, that's the top, the middle, and the bottom. Did I get it the right? Yeah. I don't like it. 
It's a little bit crooked. There we go. A little better. All right, now there should be enough. This is, I trimmed these out to two and a quarter. This is two and two. And it should be enough to slightly tuck into the pocket and then raise back up. Yeah. So, so as usual, if you're new, you don't know this, but um, most of you guys have been following me for a little while. I put glue on the top part and I leave this leading edge. The leading edge is what I'm calling the edge that gets tucked into the pocket without glue. So that if you, oh, if you push it in too far and you need to pull it out, you're not dragging glue with it and accidentally gluing your pocket closed. There's no risk of this paper coming back out of the pocket. So I'm not worried about there not being glue all the way down in, inside the pocket. Okay. <clears throat> I, almost, I almost blew it. I almost put glue all the way down. I have to keep checking to make sure I have the orientation. So this is a strip, a four inch strip. Um, and so it's just a continuous pattern. So that's why I keep checking the orientation of the papers because I want there to be this visual flow of the pattern. Okay, so that is a good part of it. So now we're gonna find a strip to put here and then we'll decorate these. But first, let's go ahead, let's uh, put our placeholders in here, our tags, and I'm gonna go back and we're gonna work on page five, and we're gonna finish page five. So same thing on page five. We, I've trimmed out um, more of the same pattern. Here's my third piece. So I'm gonna line them up first, make sure they're in the right order. two are right and this one's not. I might have mixed my patterns up. It's going to be okay. I'm happy. I'm going to be all right with it. So I think what I'm going to do is actually do it this way. <clears throat> it should have been a continuous pattern, but I can tell this is... Oh, it is. It is. I panicked. It's right. Remember not to put glue on the leading edge, the edge that goes in the pocket. And then I hold it at about a 30 degree angle while I'm tucking it in, so the glue's not actually touching anything yet. a little bit of adhesive left from the original package. I have to take a break. We're gonna um, work on organizing the rest of the patterns, get these tags covered. So again, this is page four, page five, and that's it for now. I'm gonna take a break, get some more paper lined up, trimmed out and inked, so you guys don't have to watch that. And I'll be back soon. Thanks everybody for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Crate. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and you know, 
click, go on over to scrapandcreate.com and take a look at our shop. We've got lots of things. Um, we try to stay as competitive as possible, so we would appreciate you guys taking a look at our shop and considering buying your paper from us. And then I just remembered before we go, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this when I come back. We need to put magnets to uh, closures, but since I don't know if I'm gonna do any color blocking, I'm gonna wait till we come back. Okay, that's it for now. See you soon. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are working on page four of Orchids and Cats. And this page has got a couple of pockets and we're gonna use the Graphic 45 tags in those pockets. Now, earlier when we were constructing the page, I made a mistake on one of the measurements and the banner will be correct. So this page, this top flap, I, I'm pretty sure I gave you the right measurement, is six by eight and you're gonna score a half inch on the six inch side. Now what I told you on this flap was that it was five by eight and it's really five and a half by eight. Score a half inch on the five and a half inch side so you have a finished five inch panel. So again, this panel the smaller of the two panels is five and a half by eight, score a half inch on the five and a half inch side. Okay, sorry about that. And again, the banner is correct. Okay, now that I've shuffled all my papers, I gotta get them back in order. Okay, that's my centerpiece. And that's the left and the right, and that's Nala. Say good morning to everybody, Nala. She's ready for her W-A-L-K, but it's not time yet. <clears throat> So we're gonna get this page done and then I might take a break and I'm trying to decide how I had this. So I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Yeah. Yes, okay. Uh, this is from the eight by eight. This is from the 12 by 12. So again, the outside edges, the outside panels are from the 12 by 12. The centerpiece is from the eight by eight collection pack. And uh, at this point I've used two of each, but I'm not sure. I might wind up using another pad, but it'll be in the description. If you click show more, the first thing you're gonna see is a material list should have um, the name of what I'm using, the quantity. Usually the quantity comes first. Quantity and then the name. Shh, no, I'll stop that. And then um, if you continue to scroll down, you will see the playlist. I mean, not the playlist, the uh, cut list. Okay. <clears throat> I'm rushing a little bit because it's Friday and that's garden day. So you're gonna hear some background noise and I apologize for that, but I'm running out of time. I can't wait till this evening. Okay, this is from the eight by eight collection pack. And I can tell by the, the scale of the circles on the flip side. <clears throat> Now, um, when I trimmed out the centerpiece, uh, is that right? Yeah, when I trimmed out the centerpiece, I had a little bit left over, so I created this strip off of the, uh, the eight by eight piece that was left over, and that's what's gonna go right here between the pockets and the flap, okay? And I'm just kind of wiggling it in here. It's a tight fit. In this case, this happens to be 3 8 of an inch, but you really need to measure it. And if you have a spatula, I would recommend using that to help you work it just beneath the hinge.
we go. So that is page four. Oh, you know what? Gosh darn it, guys, I forgot my magnet. I'm gonna try to use my spatula to get a magnet under here. Yeah, that's gonna be a piece of cake. I'm gonna wiggle it and get a magnet under here and I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So don't make that mistake. See, that's what happens when I rush. I'm so worried about the noise that I'm not paying attention. This is a little challenging because both sides are covered. I'm just gonna use my spatula to push it in further or try to anyway. I have to be careful because it wants to stick to the magnet. I mean to the spatula. There we go. So I'm going to put this magnet here. There we go. So we can see where it's at. Now I'm going to add a little glue. Close this up. And let's not make that mistake on page five. So now the challenge is getting this magnet exactly in the right spot. And I'm gonna do something a little unusual. I'm gonna use some double-sided tape. I'm not double-sided tape. Uh, what I meant to say was, well, it is double-sided, but it's removable tape. Okay. Now there's two things we can do. We can Put the magnet here and try to cover it up with an embellishment, or we can do what I want to do, which is try to push it underneath. But now that I know where it's at, I can use my spatula to lift it and stick a magnet behind. Right underneath of this magnet. So now the important thing is that I get it uh, the right orientation. There we go. So it needs to go in the opposite, this way. See, am I getting it in the right spot? I think so. So let's remove the one with a temporary tape and see how I did. Yep, it's right on. I did it! Now I just take off my temporary tape. All good. So I'm going to add some glue to this edge to keep my magnet from moving around on us. And there you have it. And I like to leave these things in because there's always a solution. Be careful when you're lifting the paper. It's possible that it could tear. And if you feel like you're going to tear your paper, then I would recommend um, covering it up with some embellishment. Okay, there it is. And it's staying closed, so I got them lined up. Okay, let's not make that mistake on page five. Okay, let's do page five. Okay, oh, last thing on page four. So I went ahead and covered these two graphic 45 tags and I used the leftover from um, covering these pockets for uh, one on the left and one on the right. I mean, page four and page five. And then this was some scrap that I just had left over. So I didn't cut into a new um, piece of paper. I used some trimmings that I had from previous pages, okay. All right, let's get the magnet in first, Daphne. What do you guys say? Good idea? I think so. Okay. We're not color blocking, so it can go in the center. And again, uh, the measurement for the smaller of the two flaps is 
five and a half by eight, five and a half by eight. I made a mistake when I was, when we were constructing it and then I gave you the wrong measurement. The banner is correct. The cutlass mm -hmm. is correct. So disregard what I say. It's five and a half by eight. It'll still work. If you trimmed it down to five by eight, it's gonna work. Um, it would have been a problem if it was bigger, not smaller. So if you've already trimmed it down, I wouldn't worry about it. Just means that the flap's gonna come over an extra half inch. And uh, I don't see that as a big design issue. Let's go ahead and get the centerpiece in. Especially with these patterns. This is from the eight by eight. pieces ah, I'm, I've got my pages mixed up so let's do the ones I'm sure of uh, eight by eight I told you I was using the Graphic 45 tags. I think I forgot to tell you what size. These are Graphic 45 regular tags. And then I also use the Graphic 45 regular uh, die, tag die, um, to, to mount these, which makes them fit perfectly, as you can see. Okay, those will go in there. Let's go ahead and lay this strip down. Again, this is a strip cut off the edge of this. And it's a snug fit and it is three-eighths of an inch but you really need to measure um, what the gap is between your pockets and your hinge want to make sure it's slightly under that edge so that when you open and close um, your flap it's not trying to lift up that piece so just ever so slightly and this is stationary so it's less important but I still want to try to tuck it in just for um, visually I think it's, it's more it's more better okay This one's difficult to tell which way is right side and which way upside down and right side. But I kind of like this banner on the edge, so I'm going to go ahead and install it this way. Which I think is right side because when I flip it over, it looks correct. This looks like up. page five. 
There we go. I'm gonna add something to these tags, but I don't know what at the moment. You guys will see that in the walkthrough. Okay, that's it for page four and five. Thanks everybody for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create. I'll be back soon with page six. Hope everybody's having a great day. Thanks again for tuning in and spending some time with us here at Scrap and Create.